everybody, welcome back to Home Recording Made Easy .com and here on my YouTube channel. Welcome back to part three of our Universal Audio Luna Beginner's Guide series. In this video, we're going to um, pick up where we left off from the last video, which is we imported some audio. I walked you through the layout of both the edit screen and the mixer screen or window. Now we're just going to kind of color code, rename our tracks, create some buses, kind of organize our session, and just going to kind of show you in kind of real time how easy it is to just kind of get around Luna so you can see someone relatively new to using Luna kind of work through it and see how easy it would be or difficult it would be for you to get up and running on your own. But before we get started, make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Also, if this is your first time here, go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com, download the free $100 mixing course. It's a big orange button. It's right on the homepage. It's my gift to you just for visiting homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm going to give you something else for free. So here we are in Universal Audio Luna the recording system. Last video, we just imported some tracks. We walked us through the layout of the land here. Make sure you go check the last video. It's in the links in the description box below. There'll be a playlist there as well. So now I just wanna kind of organize my session. So we don't have a very big session here. What do we got, 17 tracks or something like that. I wanna color code and rename. And again, I haven't used Luna really at all. I played with it three years ago when it first came out, having used it in three years until I started this video series. So I'm still not very familiar. I've actually had to write down some notes <laughs> on how to navigate around. I'm also gonna be creating a, a, my favorite 15 shortcuts in Luna in the next video. So you'll check that out for sure to help you navigate and get around and edit and organize things a little bit quicker. So here we are, so here we go. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna go through and I just wanna relabel my tracks here. So let's do that. So we let's see, we have our, we're on our first track here. We have an acoustic guitar, I think, right? Okay, so we're just gonna double click and then a box opens up. Okay, and then we can put some comments in there if we want to. Uh, we'll just close that. And then we got a base DI, I believe. Okay, we got guitar one A and B, so we'll call this uh, guitar one A, and then we'll hit uh, enter, and that will close that box. Guitar one B, and again, there's several ways to do anything in a DAW to get around quicker, but this is just what's what's you know feels familiar to me. I'm kind of working my three through it. What do we got here? We got some fiddles here. Okay, if you hold the option key, that will solo everything up or take them all on and off at the same time. You hit the command key. Here we go. Good enough. We'll call this fiddle rhythm. We got some fiddle solos here. Holding the command key on your Mac keyboard will switch the solo will solo just the track that you're clicking on. So if I have the fiddle rhythm highlight uh, soloed, and if I, if I go and solo the next track, both of them are soloed. But if I just want to hear the fiddle solos, I got to hold my command key and then do that. And that will just, right, is that right? I believe so. Yeah, then that'll just do its own track. So we'll just do a fiddle, fiddle solo. And why am I editing and you're showing me how to rename tracks, Dave? Any idiot knows how to do that. Right, what the whole point of this video is not to show you how to double click and rename the track. But Al, if you're working, if you're getting into Luna for the first time and you wanna know how, how does, in a real world example, how quickly can it get up and running? How quickly can somebody figure out all the stuff without having to dive into the manual? That's what I'm doing here live on camera pretty much because I'm not very well versed in any of this. So let's go to the hats. So we'll call this hats. Okay, so that's guitar one. We have guitar one A, guitar one B. I'm gonna call this guitar one C, just for, and we have our kick in, so let's listen to this. Kick in. Kick out. I'm 
holding my command key to switch the solo. Room mono. Overheads. Piano. I could spell that better, right? <laughs> it's got the microphone right in front of me. I can't see. Okay, what do you got? We got stereo rooms. We had a room on it. We have stereo rooms. Okay, once again, just so you know, this we have our piano soloed. Now I want to solo up the rooms without clicking off one and clicking on the other. Just hold the command key. From stereo. Snare top. Tom one. Tom two. Okay, and that's it. Okay, so now I get everything named. Now I want to organize and group these. So again, color code and all that. So normally I'll put all my drums at the very top. So let's see. If we come over to our track list here and we hold up, click on one of the tracks, like our Tom two, hold our shift key, we can multiple select tracks. So let's get all of these drums. I'm gonna left click and drag them up to the top of the list because that's where I want them. Uh, what else? We have a kick in and a kick out. I'm using my shift key. Overheads and rooms. Oops. Don't want that overhead room. Hats. All right, so now all my drums are here. So let's put these in a nice, in an order that makes sense. Snare top. Kick in, kick out, snare top. Where's my snare bottom? I want to put my hats. Oh, forgot to name this one. Get that right, Tom one, Tom two. All right, then we got our overheads. Room mono, room stereo. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna color code these. Again, holding my shift key, the color wheel. I don't, I wish they had more colors. Kinda of like this for my, oh, that's awfully bright. Turn down the brightness on my monitor here a little bit. Okay, that's actually too much. Let's do that. <laughs> okay, done. All right, so now next I'm gonna do my bass. So I'm just left clicking and dragging here. Uh, I like bass to be blue. Then we have acoustic guitar. We'll leave that green. We have our guitar one, guitar one A, guitar one B, guitar one C. I'll make those a different shade of green. Fiddle rhythm, the fiddles. Make those pink. Yeah, why not? And then we have our piano. Make that purple. Okay, so now I've color coded things, right? So we've gone ahead and we've named, organized, and color coded, you know, pretty quick. I mean, none of this stuff. Now, here's another thing about Luna that you need to know. I'm always used to in any DAW hitting Command S to save. This is save a bookmark. This is always saving. Luna is always saving in the background. So you never have to worry about loss and save. It is always backing up and saving, which is fantastic. So now that we've done that, let's go to our um, our mixer. We'll use command equals to move over so I can look at it in my console view. And here we go. So let's create some buses. We, we don't have a big session here, obviously, but I'm going to want a bus here. So I think if uh, we come up to our tracks menu over here, hit the plus, we're going to add a bus. We're going to add a bus. We're going to make it stereo. We're going to call it drum bus. Summing. Do we want to use our API or our Neve summing extension, which is a unit, which is a universal audio Luna feature. Oh, let's use the API because we're eventually going to use the API um, for our channel strip and our mixing portion of this series console. We're going to put the API 2500 because, again, we're going to use the API console. So let's do that and let's hit OK. Now, where's our bus? Oh, it's thinking. Where's it going to put it? Okay, it puts it all the way down at the end. So you'll see it here in the bottom of the list. So if I scroll over here, here it is. 
And if I want to see, here's our channel strip, or excuse me, here's our API 2500 on our drum bus, which is down here in green. I can change the color of that if I want to make it the same color as my drums. Can I move this over? Can I drag this? Uh, let's see, can I do it here? Can I move buses to, yes, I can. So I could put my drum bus near my drums if I want to, or I could put it all the way down at the end of the console. Uh, maybe we should make the buses like that white color, just so we could keep it there. So there's our drum bus, okay? With our API 2500, and I believe we're gonna, where's our summing? Is that gonna be down here? It asked me for about the API summing. Oh, is that it here? No, where is it? Input, right. So here's the summing extension for this. Now you could change this if you wanted to. We can make it Neve if we wanted to make it Neve. But why would we do that if we're using an API console? But you can do whatever you want. So that's really cool. So we set up a bus there. What else we got? We got uh, a base bus. We have a bass, an acoustic guitar, three guitars and fiddles and a piano. Now what we could do, I mean, again, you could do this a million different ways. Normally I'll have buses for everything. Even though there's only one bass DI, I'd probably put a bus and put an extension on it. Cause I don't think you could put an extension. Yes, you can't in only extensions the the summing portion, the summing extension can only be on buses. It can't be on individual tracks, right? So if we want, like, let's say for these, um, Let's add one for the acoustic guitars here. So let's add another track. Let's add another bus or our guitar track. So we're going to call this, we'll call this E guitar bus. We don't need to use the compressor for that. We're just going to use, right? We do, we're just going to use the API summing. And then where is that? I put it, put it right next to the other one. So I'm gonna put this next to my guitars if I want to, like this. And then I could change the color so they're the same. Usually I would put the buses right next to each other. So now you can see we don't have the, the compressor here. We do on the drum bus if we wanted to use the, eight, the 2500 as our drum bus compressor, but we don't even need to do that. We can even remove this, right? and just have our summing extensions. Okay, so what we could do to get more of the summing feels, you can make a bus for everything if you wanted to. I mean, you could put our bass and our, you know, we could make a bass bus, we could make acoustic guitar bus, a fiddle bus, a piano bus, whatever we wanted to do, we could do all of that. Um, and then what we can do, just to keep things simple, I'm probably gonna move, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna move my buses down at the end of the console, because that's normally where I would we'd have them. So they're down here. Okay, so now we got our buses set up. For now, a couple of buses. We have all our stuff color-coded and whatnot. So now we go back to command equals. Let's go ahead and let's make sure, let's do some basic housekeeping and then we'll end this video and I'll show you a bunch of editing features in another video with a bunch of shortcuts. So they're all consolidated in one video and you can take some screenshots of all the commands and that might be kind of helpful. Boy, I'll tell you what though, this, uh, this, this color orange is driving me nuts. I gotta make that a darker color. I wish we had some better colors here in Luna or some additional colors. Those are just crazy bright. Anyway, okay, so let's do some fade ins and fade outs. So let's do this. Now, one thing we can do is we can, uh, for all our drums here, we can just highlight. We can either click on the track and we can move our, our cursor. It's a lot like the smart tool is in Pro Tools where depending on where you put the, the cursor over the clip, it will change the head. And we can just fade in like that on a per track basis, or we can come over here, we can left click and highlight all the different tracks because they're pretty much ending at the same time right here. And we can hit the letter F and that'll do a fade out, see that? So now we get everything faded out here. And if we bring, go back to the beginning of the, of the session. Now the other thing you want to learn, uh, if you want to zoom in and out on the timeline, it's the letter T will zoom in, the letter R will zoom out. So here we go here, we can, we want to get rid of what we can also do here is we can select uh, all of these. Oops, let me close the color palette here. 
think you could just select. There must be, there's not a command A where you can select all. There has to be a way. I just don't know what it is offhand. But let's say we wanted to um, hold our shift key and select our different clips here. And let's say we wanted to get trim off all of these, um, all the beginning of all of these, right? To shorten them up. We could come over here and we can just, what you want to do is move your cursor. See how it turns to a bracket? This is just like Pro Tools. And then I believe I can do the letter F and it'll fade it in and it did. You just can't see it because it's uh, it's faded in right here. But let me do Command Z on that. Um, bring this in even further. If I hold on my Command key, it'll take off the snapping feature as I move this. And then I can do the letter F and just do a little zoom in or a little fade in, excuse me. Now I think, can I select all the tracks like that? It's selecting all the tracks, but it's not selecting all the clips. I don't think, I think you gotta hold your shift key. Or no, you just gotta highlight, I'm sorry. Oops. And hold the shift key and select these one at a time. Oh, that's why I'm not at the beginning. There we go. Do that. I can hold my shift key and I go through here. And then I could either just fade it like this or fade it like this by hand, however you want to do it. It really doesn't matter, I suppose. Okay. Fade that in like that. Okay, and I think we're good there, right? So again, using the letter the letter R to zoom. I think, did we do this? We we already did this, right? Oh, we didn't, we, we lost the fade out. Oh, I didn't do it on the drums. Did I not do it on the drums? I thought I did. Let's see. So we're gonna highlight all of those, use our bracket, pull it in like this. And then we can take our fade and we can fade like that. Yeah, I must have not shrunk, shrunk it up and up here. So let's see, we could, I made the fades a little too long here, but that's okay. I guess we could tidy these up. Hit the letter F and then pull these in. There we go. All right, so that's pretty good. We hit return, that'll bring us back to zero. And now here we have our, everything kind of edited. Okay, we could change the, the click, uh, we could change the track heights here if we want. So we can see them all here. I think if you do control option command with the down arrow, that'll bring everything right into zoom here. So again, I'll show you in the shortcuts menu, but use control option command, hold that at the same time, hit the down arrow on your keyboard. That will put everything into, into the screen. All the tracks will be in view. So you don't have to scroll up and down the screen. And also from left to right. It puts everything right in front of the screen, right? So I'll make these make these uh, medium. So you can see we'd have to scroll down to see all the tracks. If I do Control Option Command and the down arrow, there we go. That's pretty cool. So now we got our buses. We got color codes. We got fades in. We got fades out. The next thing we can do as well. Let's say we wanted to, and I'll show you this probably in the editing feature, but I'll just show you quickly. So let's say we have our Tom track and we have all the bleeds. You have all the bleed uh, if we solo this up here. So 
we wanted to get rid of all the bleed between the hits, we can do that. We can come in here, we can zoom, oops, we can zoom in. And you can see where he's hitting the tom, like right here. You can see the tom hit right here. All right, so there's the tom hit. So now if you want to, um, you want to zoom in on the waveform here or, or, or to zoom out on the waveform itself. So you can see how large the waveform is. It's command option, command, hold it down. Use your right bracket key to zoom in more your left bracket key to zoom out. This is good when you're cleaning out Tom hits to make sure that you can distinguish between what's bleed and what the real hit is. Right? So let's say we want to get rid of this. There's a few ways we can do this. We can just highlight this and just hit the delete key if we wanted to. That's one way to do it. Right? You can just get through all that and then you can go between the hits. I'm just left clicking with my mouse, dragging over, hitting the delete key. That's pretty standard in any DAW. You can do that if you want to. You could zoom out and see where we are between the hits, right? It's a quick way to kind of go through. And I can use T and R as my keys here. And again, we're snapping to the grid. If we don't want to snap to the grid, we could turn off our snap here as well. Or if we want to not snap to the grid, we can hold down the command key and that gives us free reign. If you want to get right up to that hit, you can do that as opposed to coming up here and clicking the snap on and off. Just hold down the command key that temporarily um, disables the snap. All right, so if we just do this so we can get nice and close and tidy up to the end or, or the beginning of that hit. Right? So we can hold down the command key. That's our last hit here. Delete. Now I'm just scroll over and see what we got here. That could be the, do you have any more hits in this song? Yeah, there's a couple here. What's here? These are snares. All right, so we can, looks like he's got another hit here. We'll zoom in a little bit. Okay, we want to hold down the command key to take the snap off. That'll go here. Now let's see what we have here. Okay, so he's got some Tom hits there. We don't want to get rid of those. Hold the command key. So we can get in there nice and tight. So we can leave those three hits in there, those three little snare hits, so we can get rid of them. Oops. Hold the command key. Okay, now what we can do is now we have all these little, all these little slices, right? All these little slices, and we don't want that. At least I don't like that. I wanna make it one block of audio, but I want everything between the hits to be silent. So if I just zoom all the way out here and just left click and drag and highlight all the events, I could come up here to consolidate and I can use my consolidate button or I can just write, uh, you know, or, oh, darn. Or I think I can just hit the letter Command H. That will, no, Command H actually puts everything back and heals it, right? Yeah, we don't wanna do that. Command H will, uh, will heal the track to the original. What we want to do, I believe, is we want to come over here, highlight this, and then we want to come up here to consolidate. And consolidate will get, now there's no bleed, right? It's all, all that's left is what we did there. Now we lose the fade, so we got to fade back in and out again. Like that. And then we can resize the tracks if we want. And then we got everything the way we want it. So that's pretty cool too. So I won't do the other one off. I'll do the other one off camera here between now and the next video. So there we go. So that's it. So then Tom too, I would go through and do the same thing. So now once I have everything kind of, uh, let's just, we can also resize one track just by doing, just by doing this. If we want to take this fade off and then move this in a little, so it's a little bit more neat. So my my ADD doesn't kick in. <laughs> okay. 
And again, I'm always going for Command S, but you don't need to because it's always saving in the background, which is great. So that's basically, I mean, how quickly you can really get up and running here in Luna. You get a session in here, you get some audio files. You just color code, drag things around, organize them the way you want, color code them the way you want. That's how you could go in and quickly uh, delete and clean up, let's say a Tom Tom track, which is kind of neat. Um, and that's pretty cool. And then we made some buses down here as well. Now we can also, let's see, let's just take a, I have something in solo. Okay, the other thing too is if you right click on the meter, we can see where the, whether the meter is pre-fader or post-fader. Right now it's all pre-fader, right? So if we put it on post-fader, watch what happens. Right, so it's on a meter by meter basis. It's probably a global setting for that somewhere, um, but I'm gonna keep it on pre-fader. So if we wanted to do some clip gain, let's say, let's say on some of these tracks, I mean, you can look at the main output, you can see that we're clipping everything, right? If I put everything at zero here, is everything at zero? There's our drum buses right there we go. So everything else is at zero and we're still clipping everything. So let's say we wanted to come over to like our snare top here and we want to do some clip gain. Well, we can do that here under utility, right? We can go over to our utility. Let's close our input here. That's where our Neve summing is over to utility here and here's our trim so let's say for like our snare oh snare bottom didn't uh, didn't get renamed what happened there what i renamed that okay uh let's see snare top for example I can do that, turn it down 8 dB just by doing that, or we could do it here, I believe, right? So if we're in if we're in the small, we need to be in the medium default mode so we can see our here, but here we could do it here as well. Because this meter is pre-fader, I can and I have no plugins on the session, we can kind of check how hot the signal's coming in. So if we wanted to, you know, lower it so we can get through, you know, negative 10, you know, make it negative 10, negative 12, or whatever before we hit our plugins, we can do it here. So we could do it in either spot. So you can easily go through and just, you know, quickly just do some clip gain here uh, just to kind of make sure nothing's clipping. Isn't that right? Oh, you know why this is not nothing's routed to the drum bus? Because we didn't change the output, right? So let's close the let's close the utility. Let's go to the output here. Where is it? We don't want to see the sends or the inserts. 
Where is the... The output side of this, how come I don't see it? So we could change the routing of where these tracks are routed to. Um, inserts, console, utility, tape, input. Isn't there an output section? Oh, here it is, I don't have it turned on, no wonder. <laughs> okay, the little orange stoplight. Okay, so I wanna change this to the drum bus, or we want this to go to a drum bus, and you can see it actually changes the metering. Let me go back and show you that. That has to do with the, because we're going to the API bus with the extension, it changes the way the meter looks. Let me, uh, let me show you that. If we go back to main, you'll see the scaling of the meter changes. So it actually matches the outputs here, drum bus. It actually goes, it actually changes the metering to line up with what's on the drum bus and what's on the drum bus is our, um, is our API extension. I believe that's why that does that. Now, the question is, can we do multiple tracks at once? Let's see, if I highlight the first one, I grouped them all here, highlighted, there's a little blue box. And it will change all of them, great. Okay, good. So now I can just, how do we get off focus here? There we go. Here's our drum bus. Okay, so we have our guitar bus too. We can do that as well. So we wanna change our guitars and bring that down to that guitar bus that we created. Uh, we come over here and we go electric guitar bus. Now they all change, the metering changes. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, that's really cool too. So that's how you create your buses and you route everything to your buses. You gotta make sure you can see the outputs here. And again, we can maybe in the next video, I mean, I'll create some more buses here. But anyway, <clears throat> now that we got kind of the, you know, everything kind of house kept a little bit and everything kind of organized and uh, we did a little bit of gain stage in there, we turned down some clip gain. In the next video, we're gonna come back and we're gonna throw some plugins on and we're gonna start, um, you're know, going through this and just kind of mixing it, playing with, we'll play with the API stuff first, Universal Audio Luna, the API extension, some of the vision channel strips. Maybe we'll do a whole mix with just kind of the API vision and maybe, you know, the Universal Audio thing. And then in the subsequent video, we'll do one where we're just using third-party plugins to see how Luna kind of reacts to that. So I hope you found this a little bit helpful, creating a session, organizing naming, creating buses, doing some basic cleanup work, some gain staging, gain staging, making some buses and getting yourself organized. So in the next video, we'll come back and do some more. So like I said at the beginning of the video, make sure you first you get a like, share, subscribe. Go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com, get that free mixing course. Get $100. It's my gift to you. Thank you so much for visiting Home Recording Made Easy. And also, if you take that course and you want one of my full featured training courses, and I have everything from EQ to compression, recording, mixing, mastering, everything from beginner, intermediate to advanced level, depending on where you are in your journey in your home studio, you could take one of those courses and I want to give you a 25% discount coupon code. If you use the coupon YouTube25 at checkout, that will take 25% off anything on the website. Go ahead and do that today. Let me know in the comments below if you like Universal Audio Luna or if you're getting something out of this series. And if you're thinking about switching or if you're using it, what you like the most about it. And until the next Luna video, I've been Dave with HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com. Thanks so much, everyone, for watching me today. And I'll see you in the next video.